keep awake. Have you ever uh, had to keep awake all night long? Like, have you ever pulled an all-nighter? Who's, who's actually pulled an all-nighter? Be honest. This is a safe place. You can confess. All-nighters. You have to stay up all night long because there's a test tomorrow or there's a paper due or maybe at work there's a project you haven't gotten done and the deadline is first thing in the morning. So you've got to pull an all-nighter in order to accomplish it. Now, the key to pulling a successful all-nighter is, of course, staying awake. And I, I, I did not have to pull an all-nighter until I was working on my master's degree. I made it through high school and college, undergrad, without pulling an all-nighter. But I got to my master's degree, and I realized I can't get this paper done. There's just too much. I've got to pull an all-nighter. Coincidentally, or maybe not coincidentally, it was at the same time that I discovered the joys of coffee. <laughs> Up until this point, coffee was this sort of nasty, bitter drink that everyone else liked, but I couldn't seem to develop a taste for, but in this one moment, I realized it is the elixir sent from heaven above. <laughs> ah, coffee. In my dorm, it was either coffee or Mountain Dew. Yeah, Mountain Dew. Oh, that stuff. Yeah, it keeps you awake, but it rots your entire digestive system all the way from the mouth all the way through, just corrodes the whole thing. Ugh, nasty stuff. So, uh, you know, coffee, Mountain Dew, all that stuff is not the safest way to stay awake during an all-nighter. The best way to stay awake is to get up, right? Is to get up from your desk and shake it out and get moving and get engaged and wake yourself up, get a breath of fresh air. So what we used to do at at college in Kirksville, Missouri. You have to know this. It's important. At the end of the fall semester in Kirksville, Missouri during finals week, it tended to be a little chilly outside. Uh, winter in Kirksville, pleasant, pleasant time. Um, so we held what we called uh, now, those of you who know me, I'm about to tell you something about myself that you'll be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. But for those of you who may not know me, please don't judge. <laughs> Based on this one story, don't judge. Because we used to hold what we called the nearly naked midnight run. <laughs> now the idea behind the nearly <laughs> the idea behind the nearly naked midnight run was that we would meet it was college, okay? Come on, it was college. We would meet at the front door of the dorm wearing shorts and shoes and nothing else. <laughs> and then we would we would, you know, gird ourselves and we would run out the front door of the dorm and run all the way around the building in these sub-freezing temperatures, often with ice and snow and everything, and come back in. And by the time we got back in, we were awake. We were definitely awake with the uh, nearly naked. I cannot believe I just used that as a sermon illustration. I, I, I do tell you, when, back when I was doing the nearly naked midnight run, I never thought to myself, hmm, this will come in handy someday. And so, Nice sermon illustration. But the point is to get up and get moving and get active so you can pull off the all-nighter and stay awake. The reason I'm talking about it is because we are entering into an all-nighter kind of season. The season of Advent is a spiritual all-nighter in which we are called, invited, even commanded to stay awake, be alert, be on the lookout, be in expectation and anticipation for the coming of Christ. Be awake, be alert. And the best way to do that, even though coffee is all, oh so tasty and Mountain Dew does the trick, but the best way to do that is to get up and be active and be doing and be engaged with the world and get that breath of fresh air so that you can stay awake. Hold on to that hope that something good is coming. It's not here yet. Despite some people's insistence that we just rush straight to Christmas, Emily. <laughs> we have got to wait for it. I mean, we've actually, as a, as a culture, we've kind of been in Christmas for however, a month now, right? There is value in having a time of just waiting for it. It's not here yet. Go to the website, isitchristmas.com. Just go in, on your spare time, isitchristmas.com. Look it up. It's a beautiful website. It's got one word on there. No. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas starts on the 25th of July and it goes for 12 days. We're, of, sorry, 
you got to wait a long time. <laughs> Christmas starts on the 25th of Thank you. And it proceeds for 12 days from there. We are waiting for it. We are expecting it. And it makes a difference. Jesus is telling his disciples in Matthew 13, wait for it. Expect it. Keep your eyes open for it. Be alert for it. For the coming of Christ. For the presence of God. This, this passage starts with his disciples being distracted. Distracted by the beautiful temple in Jerusalem. This is an amazing place, this temple. The stones are enormous and the disciples are immensely distracted by it. This is uh, a teaching of Jesus in which he is saying, hey, focus here. Focus here. I know the temple's pretty. I know the stones are gigantic. But I need you to focus with me away from that place. And on to the presence of God. This is the, in Jerusalem, these steps right here in the left-hand side of the picture are the, the temple steps. It's not a replication of the temple steps. Those are the steps that were there a couple thousand years ago. They led up to this great big gate up at the top of the steps that is now a wall. But, but those steps themselves, I, I stood with my family on those steps those however many thousands of year old steps. If you have a chance to go to Israel, just do it. Don't even think twice. Do it. You can stand in places and think to yourself, Jesus stood here. Jesus walked on those steps. And it was on those steps that his disciples said, oh, look at the pretty temple. Look how nice the temple is. And Jesus said, you think the temple's nice. It's going away. It's going to be dust. It's going to be nothing. It will be reduced to rubble. Focus on what you're supposed to focus on. Focus on the presence of God. Focus on the coming of Christ. Anticipate the goodness, the promise, the hope that God offers you. I mean, the temple was everything. It wasn't just a place to worship. The temple was government and economy and authority and power. The temple was everything of this world. Jesus is telling his disciples, stay awake, stay alert. Hey, be present right here, right now. Focus on what's happening in the world. This chapter of Mark is a little apocalypse. It's, it talks about the return of Christ. It talks about the coming of Christ. A description of the Messiah, God's anointed one. And for the people of the Jewish faith, this is a deep source of hope that the Messiah will come. And there are a lot of ways to think about that, a lot of interpretations of what that means. Some said it would be tomorrow. Some said it's going to be five minutes from now. Some said it's going to be a few generations down the way. There are a lot of different ways to interpret the promise of the coming Messiah. Mark is saying to all of these, hey, you know what? Nobody really knows. Nobody knows. That one who's saying it's coming any minute now, they don't really know that. The one who's saying it's a few generations down the road, they don't really know that either. Nobody knows when it's happening. So, in the meantime, wake up, stay awake, stay alert. And it's not about Mountain Dew here. It's about activity. Get up, get moving. Be involved with the world. Be involved with the community. Keep your eyes open for the coming of Christ. Don't be distracted by the temple. This is Advent. Be looking for Jesus. What you see, what you will see, depends on what you're looking for. I've said this before. I'll probably say it again. It's one of the most important themes of all Scripture. What you see depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking at the temple, you will see the temple. If you're looking for Christ, I promise you, you will see Christ. If you are looking for poverty, you will see poverty. If you're looking for injustice, you will see injustice. If you're looking for oppression, you will find it. If you're looking for conflict, plenty of that. What you see depends on what you're looking for. Follower of Jesus, are you looking for the coming of Christ into this world? Reactions to the news of the grand jury decision in Ferguson provide ample evidence of this truth. Everybody has their own response. Everybody has their own reaction. If you are a law enforcement officer who has found yourself in a difficult situation, you will react and respond to the situation that way. You will see that in this story. 
If you are a young black man who has had the clerk of a store follow you around because they think you're going to steal something, you will see the story that way. If you are the parent of a teenager who has ever been scared about them walking around town, you will see it that way. What you see depends on what you're looking for. Follower of Jesus, are you looking for the presence of Christ? Do you have your eyes open to the anticipation of Christ's coming into this world? Are you looking for Jesus? No one person is right or wrong here. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying everyone has their own perspective. Everyone sees things in their own way. The question for followers of Jesus is what are we looking for? Last week I heard Reverend Willis Johnson speak on NPR, November 25th, on All Things Considered, and he was asked about his son. He's a pastor of Wellspring Church, which is in Ferguson. It's the United Methodist congregation right in the middle of everything. And Pastor Johnson was asked, what do you, how do you talk about this event with, with your son, a teenager? And he said this, I hope, right off the bat, Advent begins with hope, I hope that my son is encouraged to know that he has the space, the opportunity, the right to stand for something. I pray that he understands that we live in a society, while it is challenged, it is also full of possibilities. And that he has a responsibility to shape what it will become. It doesn't have to look like what it looks like now. Hope, an assurance that the future's better, no matter what the present looks like. Hope, are you looking for Christ? What you see depends on what you're looking for, so you might as well be looking for Jesus, yeah? You might as well. Hope means that you know Christ is on the way. Hope means you are assured that Christ is coming. Hope reorients the focus of your life. I know there's distractions. I know the temple is awful pretty. I know that there are things that detract our minds away from God. Squirrel! I know that there are a lot of things in the world that tend to pull our attention away from the coming of Christ. And, and Jesus is saying, hey, hey, I know the temple looks cool, all lit up for Christmas. But look for Jesus. Look for the coming of God in the world. Hope reorients our priorities so that in every situation, in every conversation we have, in every interaction with every single person, we are looking for the coming of Christ. We are anticipating the birth of a Savior. How do you find hope in situations that feel hopeless? I don't know the answer, but I know how to start. I know how to start just look for Jesus. If you want to find hope, look for Jesus. Hope wakes you up. It is not spiritual mountain dew. It is a spiritual midnight run <laughs> to get you out and engaged and breathing the fresh air of God's Holy Spirit so that you will have eyes ready to see Jesus. When you're feeling slow, when you're feeling sluggish, lethargic, lazy, when you feel the energy ebbing, it is time to get up and go, and do, and serve, and love, and celebrate God's presence. Go look for Jesus. What you see depends on what you're looking for. So, for Christ's sake, keep your eyes open. Would you pray with me, please? Forgive us, O oh God, for being distracted by so much of the temple around us. Call our attention back to you, to the promise of your presence in our world. Keep us awake and alert, God. Show us how to get up, and get moving, and be engaged in the world in a way that that awakens us and a way that serves as an instrument of your hope, reflecting your light. 
may we enter a holy advent with our eyes open to see you. This we pray in Jesus' name by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen.